What we're going through today is called the cyber Q chain, and it gives us a really good understanding, a structured approach to its ethical hacking. And with that in mind, it helps us understand all the different phases that a bad guy, a threat actor, a bad actor will be going through in order to complete a hack. If you're new to this channel, remember to smash the subscribe button so that you don't get hacked. <laughs> And of course, moving forward, I will be your best friend forever in the world of hacking. And I am all 14 AWS certified. So I have all 14 AWS certificates. I also have certified ethical hacker, CSSP, as well as CompTIA Security Plus. So I am your go-to guy for all things cybersecurity. And in the daytime, I work as Amazon Principal Security Engineer. And in nighttime, I work as a professional hacker. I'm just kidding. <laughs> there are seven phases when it comes to the cyber queue chain. And we'll be walking through each of these seven so that you can learn exactly what it takes to go through a complete ethical hacking exercise or campaign. So the first one is what we call as reconnaissance. And when it comes to reconnaissance, it means trying to find out, trying to scan for environments, trying to figure out what are all of the different information, all of the different devices, all the different systems, employees that the organization holds. So you're really looking out for information regarding the organizations, the systems, the services that you're running. And think of it like you are a burglar and you are about to go and rob a house. The first thing you'll be doing is trying to understand, hey, on this street, there are say 10 houses and they have different types of security controls. Some of them would have high fans, some of them would have low fans, some of them would have CCTV cameras trying to monitor and run surveillance across the area of the house. And some of them could have 4K high definition CCTV cameras and others could just be black and white with no advanced capabilities like motion detection or person recognition. And in that case, this is the first part you're doing as a hacker is to scout, to gather data, to get information and see what you need to do next. Now that you have gathered your information, the next thing you want to do is to be able to get ready your weapons. These are the things, the tools, the scripts, the software to be using to go after the organization. So you would have, say for example, perhaps you have now understood you've scanned the environments and you notice that some of the employees are perhaps using some outdated operating systems and you are preparing your payloads. So perhaps your payload is in the form of a PDF document. It could be form of a Microsoft Excel sheet that has a malicious macro attached to it that could execute some things inside the operating system. And once you have created your payload or your exploit, you are now ready to move on to the next phase where you are going to deliver that over into the target devices. When it comes to delivery, it's about sending the payload over to the target devices or users. So say for example, it could be through a bad USB. So the USB, once it is plugged in to an employee's computer or to the mobile device, it would trigger the payload, allowing you full remote control of the systems or devices. It could also be through email. So perhaps you're running a phishing campaign in hopes that the user open up the malicious payload, say in a PDF document, make a Microsoft Word document. So in that case, once you open it up, it will execute the malicious code, giving you full control of the system. It could also, for example, be through social media messages. So what happens is some of the phishing attempts would be sending, say for example, job opportunities to the employees saying that, hey, we can give you a 30% bump, but what we need is your personal data. We need your employees details and collecting or harvesting all those information or along with it, sending a job description in a specific attachment that also has malicious code. And some other time, it could also be a direct sending of the payload through the internet over into target services. Say for example, the organization runs web servers and they have a vulnerability in it. And there is a specific payload that can be sent over to the target system that will lead to the hijacking of the system. With the exploitation phase, this is where the malicious code that we have created earlier in the weaponization phase and are being delivered say either through the internet, through email, through USBs or whichever the case is, it now gets executed. And as part of the execution, it could be because of an unpatched service, an unpatched feature or vulnerability or misconfiguration in any of that. 
And at the same time, if you think about the weaponization phase as we're creating the malicious code, what happens is we may be not just executing and taking advantage of the misconfiguration or on-patch system or feature, we could also along with it install a malware. Say for example, the malware is not part of the payload. So what we do is we instruct the exploitation to also go ahead and download a malicious software that we have created that can give us phase number six, which is to get persistence. And with persistence, it means that even if the user decides to remove the program, remove the executable, we continue to have access to the computer. We continue to be able to remotely control the computer. And last but not the least, we have action on objectives. So what is the ultimate goal of the hack? Is it to launch a ransom? So for example, you may be locking up the computers, the devices, and then saying, hey, organization, what we need you to do now is if you want to unlock all of your devices, all of your information, pay us X amount of cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. Or could it be just to destroy the services? So perhaps it is a state-sponsored hack and you want to destroy specific government agency or organizations or to disrupt them. Or could it be just in order to get information of the organization? Say, for example, they may have data, personal data, top secret information, and you just want to collect those data, pull them down from the organization's data repositories into the hacker's environment. So what exactly is the point of the attack? What is the purpose of the hacking campaign? And that is where we end on the action objective. Once the objective has been accomplished, mission has now been completed.